Uh, I'm Tina and welcome to this very special video I have for you today. Lots of fun things happening. Uh, I haven't made a video in a while and today I have a special lovely tutorial for you to show you how to make my Hakla mittens, mosaic crochet mittens from start to finish. And there is more. It's my birthday! <laughs> so uh, I decided to celebrate with you guys. I've been working all day. It's just midnight now. And I am turning 41, which is way better than 40. Like 40 was a bit of a shock. 41 is just great again. <laughs> so I wanted to celebrate with you guys. And for my birthday, I always do an annual sale on Ravelry. Uh, the same as my age. So now is starting my 41% sale for the rest of February. And I hope you will celebrate with me. I've been waiting for this whole, all day. Oh no. There we go, there we go, there we go. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh my God, this is the first time that nothing spills. That must be for good luck. Ah, oh, the lovely Prosecco. So for hubby. And scowl, cheers, salute. Ah, oh, happy birthday to me. Mm. And if you want to be extra sweet, please leave a some sweet message below, both to make me happy on my birthday and to obviously totally confuse the, the uh, YouTube algorithm and they will think this is the hottest stuff online and will suggest it to everybody to watch. Cheers. I'm a, I'm a what do you call it? Um, advertising mastermind, yeah? <laughs> mm. Mm. Isn't this sweet? Okay, so. What we're gonna do today, we're gonna do the mittens and I showed you the colorful ones. These are the ones we're gonna do today. And I love making those. It's such a great change from making all these huge blankets. Uh, so they're rather quick and very easy. I mean, you know, everything's easy when you know how to do it, but I show you everything stitch by stitch. So anybody can do this, just if you know some basic mosaic and uh, lots of color fun possibilities. You can make them with many colors or just two colors. These I made just some extra fun changing these two here. And then you can also just make them in two colors like these, which I made for Pepe or younger. And the pattern comes in sizes extra small up to extra large. So you can make them for kids up to grown ups. And the, the written pattern, which is available on discount in my Ravelry shop now, comes with a beanie pattern as well. This one is actually a bit small for me, so I'm not going to put it on. Obviously, my hair is very nice also, so we shall not mess with that. But uh, yeah, I added this little beanie pattern so that comes as an extra PDF with the written pattern. If you want me to make a tutorial for this one as well, please let me know. Uh, what more? Yes, what you need is sport weight yarn. I was using this um, Jameson and Smith Shetland wool. You need 50 grams of each color. These are, are small skeins, so you need two of each color. But if you use other sports weight yarn, then you just need one ball, 50 ball. Uh, of yarn in each color and a hook 3.5. What was I going to say more? Yeah, I wanted to show you my latest release, the frost pattern. This I just released at the beginning of the month and I very much like it. And I did a couple of cushions in it. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Isn't it lovely? So that's available too on Ravelry. And I'm definitely forgetting something, but I don't really care because uh, it's my birthday! <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Let's get to it. Come on, crochet those, knit those mittens with me. Ching ching! Okay, so we're gonna get to it. Um, here I have some already made mittens. These are the extra small. So these will fit my tween. He's 11 going 12. They're a bit small maybe for him, but um, you can also make them in, in finer yarn and then you get baby sizes. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make this one here, which is the large. Um, this one will fit pretty much anyone adult. It fits me, it fits my husband. It's a tad big for me actually, but um, but it's uh, it's nice to have it. It's you know, like my, my hand stops here, but I have rather short uh, hands. So, And the medium is actually the same length, but just a bit um, a snugger fit. So the large and the medium are sort of the the go-to grown-up sizes. 
and then the large is just a bit wider fit. Uh, I am using for these, so the, the suggested yarn for the pattern is Pernilla from Filcolana. Uh, but I'm using here now uh, also, I also suggest this in the pattern, is the Jameson Smith, the four ply wool. I absolutely love working with this wool. It's absolutely, it's gorgeous. It's a uh, Shetland wool and they have the most amazing colors. I love them. And just quickly before we start, because you always ask me for colors and I just say, you know, go for it and choose your own. But I'm gonna be using this one here for main color. Uh, which is, uh, well, I'll put it in the description because it's like a long, but I'm using this, I love this gray. It's sort of like bluish gray. And then I'm using this, I love gray and brown together. So those are my go-to favorites. And this one here is for the, the color B in the, in the, in the mitten itself. I used a slightly brighter sort of orangey brown for the ribbing. And then I added one color here for fun and I don't have any more of that. So I'm gonna use this one here for fun and the other one. I think I may be doing this one or this one. I haven't decided, we'll see what happens. But um, it's fun to play with these. It's really fun to play because you can go for just a really simple two color version or three color, just making one for the ripping and then just uh, use two colors. And I think they're quite classy and nice like this. Or you can go, uh, you know, doing, um, doing adding, you know, some colors here in between. I was working on this one the other day as well. Here I did like different colors for B in between the lines always. And then you can go just totally crazy and do this one, like just uh, go up to, I think you can go up to 16 colors. Here I have, I think 12. And then I just used different colors for each and every section. And in the pattern, in the written description, you have you have a uh, explanation on how, when you're supposed to change colors, if you're doing more than uh, one, a two color version. And these are actually my favorites. I gifted these to my, my best friend and I am cutely, um, <laughs> I'm regretting it. <laughs> I love these. And here actually I used, I used Jameson, but then I used some fluffy Angora stuff or something, I don't even know what this is like some fluffy stuff here for the for the ripping and it's just wonderful. I love these. I have to make a pair for myself as well. So, like as you can see, you can go all kinds of ways. You can use two colors or up to just loads. And when you're using loads of colors, these are perfect for scraps. I mean, you just use the, you need the tiniest amount for each section and these are great for scraps, you guys. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Before we continue, I just wanted to show you quickly my newest patent release, which is this here, the Frost Bell Pool. This is like a wall hanging. And I'm so happy with this one here. Just wanted to show you quickly. It's really, this one I made a uh, really fine yarn. It's the Maxi Sugar Rush from Chepis to make it into a bell, but you can make it into cushions or, or wraps or scarves or blankets or what have you. But this was on, on hook one, 175. So it's very fine and it's just, oh, I'm so happy with it. This is going up on the walls in my new home and it's called frost because it's kind of frosty. So that was just a quick show off. <laughs> but on to what we're gonna be doing here today is to do the large size of the Hakla mittens. They work up quite quickly. They are super fun and perfect for scraps. So, you know, they've got it all. Whoop, whoop, let's do this. Okay, so before we totally get started, I was a bit inter interrupted here. Um, I wanted to say, yeah, so what you need, <laughs> so organized. Uh, what you need for, if you're using this yarn, the uh, Jameson Shetland wool, the four ply, uh, then you will need, it's 25 gram skeins. So you will need two of each color if you're just doing two colors uh, for uh, every size up to large. So it comes in five sizes from, uh, five sizes, yeah, from extra small to extra large, right? Yeah. So, uh, for, but for extra large, you need three of each if you're just using two colors, A and B. Uh, also, you will obviously need your hook. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook. And again, you can substitute this with any, any uh, sports weight yarn. Okay. So that's like in between fingering and DK. And uh, then you obviously need scissors and a 3.5 millimeter hook. And again, you can use other weight of yarn. 
I've gone up and down in these. You just have to then, that's why I did so many sizes actually, because then you can, you know, you can use finer yarn and go up in, in size or, or thicker yarn and go down in sizes. Yeah. So when we start, we start by doing the ripping. Okay. So let's just get into that. Uh, I'm going to be using this here for the ribbing. And we're going to work the ribbing back and forth like this, and then we're going to join it into a circle. Okay. So for the ribbing here, we're going to start by chaining up 15 chains. Do do. Maybe I should not have anything behind my hands here. Yeah. God, it's been so long since I, since I did a video. I'm a bit rusty. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifth, opa, fifteen. So we start by doing. 15 chains and then we're going to work the ribbing always it's it's a 14 stitch ribbing so when we go back now here for the first row of the ribbing then we're going to skip the first stitch and go into the second stitch from the hook and work single crochet the first one and now we just work one single crochet into each and every stitch and that's in the first row of the ribbing and all consequent rows actually of the ribbing we're working 14 single crochets and yeah, let's just, I don't think it's so short. We can just do it here. Always take care when chaining up for something like this and just in general to chain up not too tightly because the chains sometimes want to be, get a little, little bit small. Okay. And 14. Okay, so that's row one of the ribbing, just one single crochet in each stitch, that's 14 single crochets. And now all the rows in the ribbing are the same. So now we just chain one and we're gonna work into the back loop only to get the ribbing effect, okay? We're just gonna work one single crochet into each and every stitch only into the back loop, okay? And it's again, 14 stitches for this size only into the back loop yeah. it's clear right so not here not under both like you would usually do like so just into the back one oh, it's such fine yarn i hope you see it but it's easy enough And this is all we're doing for the whole of the ribbon, working it back and forth like this, and then we're gonna join it into a circle. And the rest of the mitten is then worked in the round. I'm just gonna check here real quick. That should be 14, let's see. Yeah, so that's 14. And you see, you get this little ridge here, which will be making this effect, the ripping effect. I'm just going to have a quick check here to see how many rows we have in this. I think it was, let me see. Yeah, it's 44 rows for the um, large. So I am just going to continue. I'll show you one more row. Okay, and so this is just what we're gonna repeat this uh, row to, the second row for the whole of the ribbing. For the large size, we do 44 rows for the ribbing. And I'm just gonna show you one more row just so everything is clear. So when we turn, we do one chain to turn and we do not work into that chain, that's just the turning chain. And then we always work into the back loop of each and every stitch, just one single crochet into each stitch into the back loop. So it's really easy. 
and you're supposed to have 14 stitches. Now, when I'm doing this normally, I'm like watching TV or whatever, and sometimes I will find that I have added at one point one stitch or skipped one stitch. That's nothing to worry about really. If you have missed one stitch, just work two stitches into one. Once you realize, and it's no problem. I would just not do it quite like right at the end or the beginning, just do it somewhere in the middle bit. And if you have added a stitch, then you can do like, you can either just, you just skip one stitch. Okay, but if everything is right and the stitch count is right, it's just one st single crochet into the back loop of each stitch, 14 stitches, like so, and then you chain and turn. Okay, so I'm now here to three and I'm gonna do the 41 missing to show you how to join it into a circle. Yes, yes. Okay, so now I've done the 44 rows of the ribbing and like I said just always take care to count every once in a while to see if you still have your 14 stitches to it for us T twelve thratan this is perfect I'm missing one T twelve no it's 14 yeah okay no it's good but otherwise like I said you can just I would just take out a few stitches and add one here in the middle no problem or skip one that's not a big thing. So before we continue and join the ribbing, then just maybe take care and see and fit it if it's for you or if it's for somebody, if you have the, the recipient around and just see that it fits nicely. It's okay if it, I mean, this was, it just fits like this loosely, but it's okay if you have to stretch it a bit, okay? Uh, just to make sure. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna join this ribbing into a circle. Oh, and also when you're counting, when you're doing the ribbing, it's really easy. Just uh, count the sort of ribbing. Yeah. So if we start here, we go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fjorton, sextan, átjó, tjú, 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 and 44, which is what we want for the large. Okay. And so now we're just going to take the two short ends, short ends, oops, I'm having this a bit. Like so, okay, we take the two short ends and align them together. And so you have 14 stitches here and 14 stitches on the other side, and we're just going to slip stitch those together. Okay, and you want to slip stitch, stitch these into the front loop of the last row that you did and into the the uh, chain up here at the, in the beginning. So the first one just goes here. You can do a chain, I usually don't, it uh, doesn't really matter. So the first, you insert your hook into the, the front loop of the first stitch here from your hook, like so. It doesn't want to go in, isn't that just, <laughs> okay. And then into the first stitch here on the other side, you see. And then you just slip stitch through. Whoop. No, it was split. God darn it. Maybe it is. Whoop. <laughs> Typical. Yeah, there we go. Okay, into the front loop here and into the first stitch here on the other side. And now we slip stitch through. Whoop, whoop and throw this one here. It's a bit more comfortable to do the extra chain here at the end, I will admit that, but I kind of don't like how it looks, but I mean, it's a very minimal detail. You can do this, the, the extra chain there if you want to make it a bit easier. And now we're just gonna do this the whole way down so that we're connecting this into a circle, okay? So we go into the front loop here, and always take care to do the slip stitches when you're joining something like this, not too tightly. And then into the, the corresponding stitch there, and whoop, whoop, slip stitch your way down. I always love joining the slip stitches. Something so satisfying about it. And when you do it this way, then you don't get a very visible join. I mean, it's a join, you can see it, but it kind of blends in with the other rib, ribbing ridges. <laughs> Uh, it's so funny when I haven't done videos in a while, I'm a bit rustic, aren't I? 
rusty. Do, 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 do. And we just go all the way down here. And since we did the counting, everything should be right and it should all fit and nicely. God willing. I have three stitches left here and three stitches left there, yeah. All good. Okay. 13 and 14. Okay, and then we do one chain here at the end, just two. And as you can see, it sort of looks like the other rippings. I mean, it's a tad different, but simulates quite nicely. So that's the ribbing joint. And then you can see again, if it fits, <laughs> fits perfect. Okay, and now we're just gonna go straight into round one of the mittens, the body of the mittens. And we are going to work basically just one stitch into each row of the ribbing. So here there are sort of there are it's it's um you're not working into stitches because we're working into the uh end sides into the sides of the ribbing yeah so there are a few possibilities there is you can go here you can go here i don't like to go into this one because it opens up a bit much so you have you want to do one in between the ridges and then one into the ridge so i will do always one here we're going to do um sorry, uh, single crochets. So one here in between, and then one into the ridge, this one here. But just find where you feel is comfortable for you to do it and try to take care that you're not going into something like this here, which is a bit big, so then it will get a bit holy. So, <laughs> holy, <laughs> but uh, you, you will see the holes more, you know? So it's just one in between its ridge and then one into the ridge. So it's basically just one for each row of the ribbing. I very much like this round too. I like all the bits, <laughs> most of them. And this is, isn't gonna take so long, so I will just show you the whole way around, I think. See if I can think about something to talk about. Yes, I love the colors in this yarn. They have a huge color selection. Absolutely love it. So, so much fun to play with these colors. Lots of tones and tones of gray and brown and it's just gorgeous. So when we're getting close to the other end, I'm going to work over this tail here. Very few tails to weave in at the end of these mittens if you just always work over over the ones that you have as you go. And so on we go. And as you can see, we do this first round just without cutting the yarn after the ripping and in the same color as you're doing the ripping. And this would be color B, if you're just doing the two colors or just whatever color you want for the ribbing. But always it's the ribbing and the first round you do in the same color as the ribbing. Okay, almost at the end. Mm -hmm. So now when it's not too far to go here, I'm gonna take this tail here from when we started to chain up for the ribbing and just... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And just hold it here and work over it as I go. And we don't have to weave that in, which is always a bonus. Okay, so now I've gone into this one and now we're here at the join. So the last two stitches go, the first one went here in between the first ridges and the second 
last stitch of the round goes here in between these two. The last stitch goes into the ribbing here into the, the where we joined. And now we should have 44 stitches. And now we're going to cut the yarn. I'll just break it because this is wool. And uh, the one extra stitch, because we want to have an odd number, is going to be the invisible join here over the join. Okay, so now we have 44 stitches because we've done one single crochet into each row of our 44 row ribbon, ribbing. And now we're going to add one extra stitch by making an invisible join here into the first single crochet of the round, okay? So you insert your hook like this from the back under both loops of the first single crochet of the row, round, sorry, and you pull the yarn through like so, and then you insert your hook back from the back here into the back loop of the last single crochet of the round and pull the yarn through like so. And as you can see here, this here then is our last stitch. And then we have 45 stitches. Okay. And this looks quite nice, doesn't it? That's the ribbing all done. On to round two. And actually before we start that, I'm just gonna cut this tail here that we worked over. Always before cutting the tails, tuck at it nicely. And then just cut, hoppa, go. And now we start with color A, okay? And we're gonna work over this tail here at the end of the round. And so I'm just gonna start here is the join. You can start wherever really, but I like to start here at the left side of the join and you insert your hook into any single crochet, just the back loop only. I have this, I have a new skein, well not new, but a tiny bit left here from the other mitts and I'm gonna use that first. And this is my favorite gray shade in the Jameson Smith. Absolutely loved it. I use it for so many things. My Fiesta, for example. Okay, so for this round, it's really easy. Insert your hook into the back loop of any single crochet from last round, pull up, make one chain. And then we're just gonna do one single crochet into each and every back loop. And we're going to work over our tail here when we start, okay? So just one single crochet and maybe for the first, I don't know, say seven, eight, stitches we're going to work over our tail and since it's single crochet it's quite enough to just do that it won't unravel okay i'm going to drop the tail and just continue going do 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 one single crochet into each stitch i absolutely love making these mittens i made so many, I've just, it's just a shame. I've, I've given them all the way. I made like five pairs for Christmas or something and I gave them all away. So, but it's really fun and easy. And once you get into the rhythm of it, it's just a great project, even if I say so myself. And it's just fun to make a small projects now because I'm always making these huge blankets. Uh, but this is a really fun, short, a quick project to make for gifts. Oh, and oh, I didn't, well, I probably will, will mental note of doing it in the intro, but uh, the pattern comes with a beanie, a hackla beanie as well to go with. So you can make a set, which is a great gift. Okay, so now I'm here almost at the, uh, close to my tail here, and then I'm just gonna take the tail from the join and work over that here as well, like so. And just continue as before, always one single crochet into each and every stitch, back loop only. Like, like now we've started the mosaic crochet, so all the, all the single crochets go into the back loop. Now on the join here, you see, because we made this, this uh, invisible join stitch here, so it's a bit looser than the other one. So when I go into that one, I actually try and get some anchoring behind it <laughs> and go a bit deeper there. I mean, it's a minor detail, but it's nice. Okay, so now we're almost finished with the round. We're supposed to have 45 stitches here. And we finish, there's one. And the last single crochet is gonna go into the same stitch as we joined in here, okay? And when we finish, I'm always going to finish the same way. I'm going to do, I'm doing my, this is the way that I, uh, well, main, almost always join when working in the round, mosaic crochet. I always move the join just one stitch 
forward to hide it a bit. So we're going to skip the chain here and we're going to join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round. And now we uh, are using, we're going to join with color B. Even if you're using the same color for the ripping color B and the pattern color B, you still have to cut it after doing the first round because it's just way neater. Okay, so at the end of round two, we're just going to join here into the first and the back loop of the first single crochet of the round, whoop whoop with a slip stitch and chain one here to fasten it. Okay, so that is round two all done. On to round three, and now we're working with color B and we're going to work over our tail here at the beginning. So just lay your tail on top of your loops, of your yeah, loops, and then work around it for a bit. And now we're going to work again, always single crochets. This is a whole single crochet round. It's just one single crochet into the back loop of each and every stitch. And as before, we have 45 five stitches. So for the first couple of stitches, I'm going to be working over my tail here so I don't have to weave it in later. And I just drop the tail like so and continue and work one single crochet into the back loop of each stitch. Here we're really laying the ground for the mosaic. We always have to start with some foundation rounds of the colors so that we can then in the next round, we're gonna start the mosaic pattern, but we need one round of each color before we get to that. Again, so satisfying to do a small project. <laughs> And it's perfect here now. It's snowing so much. Oh my God. It hasn't snowed like this in years. Okay, we're close to the finish line here. And now I'm gonna show you how we do the join always. Okay, so here is the last single crochet in the color A of the round, you see? And then we get to the join which is the slip stitch here. And I'm leaving it a bit big. I will talk at it later, just so you can see it very clearly. So what I would like to do for the last single crochet of the round, it's gonna, it's supposed to go into the join, into the slip stitch here that we use to join. And when I do that, actually, I go into this slip stitch and I go into the stitch below it as well. You see, it's like the first single crochet of the last round. And this sort of just anchors it very nicely. And now we're gonna take our color A and we're going to work this last slip stitch around the color A, just pop it up on the needle. And now we're gonna tuck it a bit and we're gonna work our last single crochet around the upcoming color. Just one single crochet here. And then I drop color B and pick up color A and always tuck it nicely at the join. That's the magic trick of the joints, just do it really tightly. And we're gonna join into the first single crochet back loop here with color A with a slip stitch, hoppa, like so. And then do one chain. Okay, so that is round three and I am going to go ahead and cut the tails because it's just uncomfortable to be having these here. Just always before cutting them, tuck at them nicely and on this one here as well. It's just nicer to work with no tails in a way. Okay. And this one here we had also worked over, so we can cut that as well. No tails to weave in so far. Hmm, you've noticed. <laughs> okay, so now we've joined here after round three and next up is starting the mosaic pattern. Boop. <laughs> On to round four and we're always switching colors, A and B, A and B, and all the even number rounds are color A, which I'm using this gray here, and then all the odd number rounds are color B, which is the brown here. Okay, so 
now we start the mosaic stitching really and so we chained one already and now we're going to do an increase and we're going to work the the repeat here now is one single crochet three double crochets so into the next stitch the first here stitch of the round is a one single crochet into the back loop and this is really the increase okay so instead of working the next double crochet here below the next stitch which would be what we normally do we're going to work it straight below this single crochet because the single crochet is the in increase okay so we yarn over and we go straight down here under our single crochet and now we're going to work three double crochets in a row and as always we drop down and work one round down when we're doing the double crochets okay so one single crochet that's the increase and three double and again we do one single and three double and the double goes here right below and so basically the way that you can see that you're doing this right is that we're going to work double crochets into each stitch from round two so there will be no stitches here left without working into them so that way you can see you're doing the increase correctly just going to show you one more time, one single crochet here and then the first double crochet of the three goes straight below it, yeah? So this is the increase, the, the single crochet. And this is the repeat all around and for large we're doing 15 repeats. So I'm going to do everything except for the last one and show you how we finish then round four. Okay, so I've done 14 repeats out of the 15 that we're supposed to do for round four. And now I just have one more repeat to go. And as you can see, it looks kind of like, well, but we will fix that now. So now there are just two single crochets left and then the, the, um, the join. So now we're going to do one single crochet here into the next stitch and then one double crochet right below it. And then we get to the join from round two, you see, it's a bit of like, so there's one stitch here and one stitch here, always up to go into the one that is below. So that way you hide the join. So now you just join, uh, yarn over and not, don't go into this one, go into this one here below and that way you hide the join very neatly. And that's two and then three. So as you can see, we're working to each and every stitch, double crochets into each and every stitch here from round two. So there are no stitches left there. And now for the join, we're going to join into, we're going to skip the chain because we already worked over that. And we're going to join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round and pop up with color B there for the join and join with color B. Always tuck at it nicely, everything nice and tight at the join. Very important. Can't stress that enough. And then join with a slip stitch, whoop, whoop, like so, and one chain. Okay, so that is color, no, it's round four all done. And as you can see, you can hardly see the single crochets here, but we know they're there because they are the increase, okay? So very nice, and now the join looks all nice here. Well, pretty nice, I'd say. So that is round four all done. On to round five, and we're working with color B, as always in the odd number rows, rounds. Mixed up this round and rows. We have the same words for both in Icelandic. Okay, so here we start now by working three. The repeat for round five is three single crochets. So it's basically one into each of the double crochets from last round. Always into the back loop, the, the single crochets. One, two, and three. And then we put a double crochet into our decrease stitch from last round. So you kind of have to open up a bit. Okay, whoop. It's nice to back into those like this because they're a bit hidden there. And one double crochet. So this is the repeat for the whole round. I'm going to show you one more, but it's super easy. So three single crochets, one, two, three, and one double crochet into the decrease stitch that we did last round, okay? So now I've done two repeats. It's a total of 15. I'm going to do up to 14 and show you how to do the last repeat uh, at the end of round five. Okay, so I have now done the 14 repeats 
and we just have one repeat left. I'm going to show you how to join. Ah, and one thing, obviously, we added uh, one stitch every for every four stitch here in, in last round. So now we have a total of 60 stitch per round. Okay, so just one more repeat. And it's, again, three single crochets. One, two, and three. And instead of going into the join here, the chain and everything, we're going to go down here and work our last double crochet of the round here down. And now we join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round with color A and a slip stitch, whoop, whoop, like so, and chain one and tighten everything. Okay, so that is round five, all done. On to round six. And now the repeat is we did the chain one and now the repeat is one double crochet. So that one goes into the middle one of the three double crochets from round four. So one double crochet and three singles. Okay, and just show you one more, one double crochet and three singles. And as you can see, it's supposed to line up like so, that it looks like small T's. For Tina. <laughs> okay, so the double crochet goes into the middle one of the three here, and then we have uh, three single crochets here over these here. Okay, one double and three singles. That's the repeat for round six, and I'm gonna do the rest of it. It's a total of 15 repeats. Okay, and to finish round six, we do exactly the same, just uh, one last repeat. It's one double crochet and three singles. And now we do one and two, always into the back loop. And the third single crochet goes into the join here. And remember, we go into the slip stitch and into the st stitch here below, mm -hmm. into the, just to anchor it. And we work around, every time we finish with a single crochet, then we always work around our upcoming color, just to hide it a bit on the inside. Although obviously nobody's gonna see the inside of the mittens, but maybe you show it to somebody who is very meticulous and will turn them inside out to see how your finishing is. <laughs> and always, I mean, who doesn't want good finish? Okay, I'm rambling, let's finish this round. <laughs> so the last single crochet goes here into the join, around the upcoming color. And then we join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round using color B and tuck it in nicely before joining. So everything is nice and tight at the join. Whoop, whoop, one slip stitch and a chain. So that is round six, all done. On to round seven, and we're using color B. And the whole round for this is a very simple repeat. We're gonna do one double crochet and one single crochet, okay? And you do this uh, 30 times for large. So just one double, one single. And the single always lands here on the double crochet, and then here in the middle. So it's all just this whole round is one double and one single, and it should land like this, you see. Okay, I'm gonna finish the round and show you how to join at the end. Okay, and it's just all been one double, one single, and now we're gonna finish it off here. Double, single, the single, it's uh, every other single was lands on ATC, and then there's one double here one single, and then a double goes into the join from round five. So you see, it's sort of like, you don't want to go into this one, you want to go down, always one into the, the one that is below. So it's neater, the join. And then the last single crochet goes into the join from last round. And we work around our color A, upcoming color and do one single crochet and then join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round. Tuck nicely at A and join with color A with a slip stitch, whoop, whoop, and one chain. There we go. And if you're gonna do a different color for now, next up we're gonna be working color A here for this bit here. That's in between these two lines. So like here I have a different color in between, then you should change color A now. 
Okay, that's round seven, all done. On to round eight, and now we're again working with color A. And if you're gonna do different colors A, then you would change color here. I'm just gonna continue with my beautiful gray. And now we are gonna, I already did the chain one, and the uh, repeat here is one double crochet, three single crochets. Are you seeing how easy this is, you guys? I mean, it's always just <laughs> one double, three singles or whatever. It's just super easy. So that's one repeat again, one double, three singles, and the double goes in between the two doubles from the last, the previous round, you see? So this is easy peasy, continue the same way, one double, three singles, and I'm gonna see you back at the join. Okay. So I've gone all around, done 14 out of 15 repeats, and we finish just exactly the same way. One double down here in between the two doubles, and then three single crochets. One and two, and the third one goes into the join, remember, into the slip stitch here, and into the stitch below. Working over our upcoming color beam, like so, and then join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round with color B. Whoopa and chain one. That's it, round eight, all done. And you see that it's starting to look good. Straight on to round nine, and we're using color B again. And now the repeat is. Doo -doo -doo -doo. We did the chain one, and now we're gonna do, we're gonna start with one single crochet, and then the repeat is one double crochet, and three single crochets. Okay, that's the repeat. One double, goes here straight in the middle, you see? Sort of the pico there, and then three singles, and the singles always in the back loop, and the double dropping down one row. Round, sorry. Okay, one double, three singles, all the way around, and I'll catch up with you at the join. Okay, so I've done this the whole way around, and now we have this beautiful zigzag here. And uh, to finish the round, then we're just gonna do one more repeat, but the last repeat finishes with just two single crochets instead of three, because we did one in the beginning, okay? So we do one double crochet, and then two single crochets. And the second single crochet lands here on the join, you see, going into both loops, working around our upcoming color A tail, like so, and joining into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round, tugging nicely at color A, and we're gonna join with color A. Whoop, whoop, with a slip stitch and chain one. And then that's round nine all done. Okay, on to round 10, we're working with color A. And here the repeat is one single crochet into the double crochet, and then three double crochets. One, two, and three. So this is basically like round, uh, what was it, one, two, three, four, okay? So we're getting to repeat ourselves here, but I'm gonna show you a bit more. Okay, so one single crochet, and three double. That's the repeat for round 10 and I'm gonna do the rest of the round and then show you how to finish it. Okay, on to round 11. And if you're gonna do a color change for color B, you see like in this one here, then the, the color B is, you know, the zigzags and then color A is the one in between. And if you want different colored zigzags like here, then you will change color B now. But we're not doing that, so I'm just gonna continue with my beautiful brown. And what are we doing? Yes, we're gonna chain one, we already did that. And then there's just one single crochet into each stitch of this round, always into the back loop. So a very simple round. One single crochet into each stitch back loop only. 
all the way around and I'm going to do that and then show you how to join. Okay, I did the single crochets all the way around and it's just three more to finish the round. So one and two here and the second to last lands in the last TC from last round and then the last single crochet goes into the join and again we go into the slip stitch and the stitch here below from the last round we're going to work around our tail as always with a finishing single crochet and do one single crochet here go into the back loop of the first single crochet of this round drop color B and join with color A and always tuck it in nicely. A, a tight join is a neat join. <laughs> Slip stitch and chain one. And that was round 11. On to round 12 and now we're using color A. And we are going to do one single crochet and then three double crochets. Okay, and another repeat. One single crochet, <laughs> three double crochet. So that's the repeat for round 12. One single and three doubles, okay? So I'll see you back at the join. Okay, so I've gone all around. And for the last repeat, it's exactly the same as the others, but just to show you the join, we'll do one single crochet and then three double crochets. And we're going over the join here. And look, I mean, the join doesn't look very good here, but you can not hardly see it here, can you? Mm -mm -mm. Just like magic. <laughs> <laughs> I love a neat join. Uh, okay, on we go. <laughs> Stop tooting my own horn here. Uh, one double crochet goes here into the last of the three double crochets here. The second one goes into the join. And remember, here is one stitch and here's the other one below. And we're going to choose the one below to make it neat. One goes here and the third goes here. And then we're going to join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round using color B, tucking at it nicely and whoop, whoop, slip stitch and a chain. And that's round 12 all done. On to round 13. <laughs> Bit of a tangle here. There we go. Um, now the repeat is three single crochets one double crochet. And as you can see, we've kind of started repeating ourselves here, but I'm going to work every single round with you up to the thumb. And then we'll, you know, there are some repeats here that you can do on your own, but let's go up to the thumb, start with that. I want to show you everything. Uh, three single crochets and one double. Okay. Three singles and one double. So this is the same as we did here, really. Okay, I'm gonna see you back at the join. Okay, we've gone all around. Hope you have two. And we're gonna finish round 13 with one more repeat. Sorry about the dog. Uh, and we do three single crochets, two and three, and then finish with a double crochet that goes down here. So, and then we're going to join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round using color A. Tuck at it nicely and then join with a slip stitch like so and chain one. And that's round 13 all done. On to round 14. And now the repeat is one double crochet and three singles. And the double crochet lands here in the middle one of the three in a row here from second to last round. So one double and three single. Do that all the way around and I'll see you at the join. 
Okay, and for the last repeat, we go again, one double, and finish with three singles. One, two, and the third lands in the join. As before, go around the upcoming color, B, tuck it nicely, like so, and join into the back loop of the first DC of the round with a slip stitch, whoop, whoop, and chain. That's round 14, all done. Okay, round 15. Now we're gonna do, for the whole of this round, it's just one double crochet and one single. That's the repeat here. One double, one single, all the way around. Okay, you do that and I'll show you how to join. Okay, so now it's supposed to look like this. We're almost at the end of round 15. And we just continue to do one double, one single. Oop. One double and one single. And the last repeat here, the double goes into the join. So we choose the one that is lower down, remember? Like so to hide the join. And the last single crochet of the round goes into the join, like so, around the upcoming color A to hide it from the back. Finish that single crochet, and then we join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round using color A. Tuck it nice and tight, and chain one. So that's round 15. All done. Okay, on to round 16, and that's color A again. If we were to change color A, that you would do it here. And we do one double crochet, three single crochets. One double and three single and continue like this the whole way around. And when we've done it the whole way around, then the last repeat lands like this. One double crochet here, and then three singles. One and two, and the third one lands here on the join. And we're working it around color B upcoming. Skip the chain and join into the back loop of the first double crochet of the round, tuck nicely at color B and join with B with a slip stitch, whoop, and chain one. So that's round 16, all done. Okay, round 17, and we are working with color B. And what we're gonna do now is we do one single crochet and then we get to the repeat, and the repeat is one double, three singles. One double, three singles, and go on like that for the rest of the round. And then when you get to the last repeat, it goes like so, one double crochet, and then we finish with just two single crochets for the last repeat because we did one in the beginning of the round. One and two, and the second one lands in the join. Work around your upcoming color, like so. That's the last single crochet. And then we join with color B into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round. Whoop, whoop, like so with a slip stitch and chain one. That's round 17. On to round 18 and now we're gonna do one single crochet and three double crochets. That's the repeat for round 18. Okay, like so. One single and three doubles. And now we're framing up our second line of zigzags. As you can see. Hmm. So 
We continue like that the whole way around. One single crochet and three doubles. And then it should look like this. And we only have one more repeat to go on round 18. So we do again one single and three double. The first double just lands in a normal stitch. The second double crochet goes on a join, so always go for the lower stitch, remember? Okay, and the third goes here. And then we're gonna join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round using color B. Tuck at it and swip swip with a slip stitch and then chain one. And that's round 18, all done. Okay, round 19, sorry I put 18. Uh, and now we're gonna do the thumb hole. And the thumbs on these guys are so easy to do, you won't believe it. I know people, some of you are afraid of doing the thumbs and everything, and it's just so easy, I think. Yes, you will just not believe it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> so we're using color B, and if you are changing colors for color B for the zigzags, then you should change here. So now we're just gonna start and do three single crochets into the back loop. And then for the thumb hole, we're just going to skip 16 stitches. If you're doing a smaller uh, version, then you skip, uh, what is it, 12? or nine for the extra small, but now we're gonna skip 16 stitches for the thumb, okay? And just, you don't have to overthink this. This is so easy. It's just hop over them. It's just, that's all there is. So we have here four, eight, 12, 16. So I'm skipping these 16, okay? And we work the next single crochet into the 17th stitch here. You see, it's just on top of a double crochet. Okay, so just hop over them, skip over them like this, so easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And we continue and do single crochets into each loop, always oh, back loop, of course, for the rest of the round. And now obviously we have 16 stitches less in our round, so the total after round 19 will be 44 stitches instead of 60 like before. Okay, I think it doesn't even, I can't even bother to stop filming to start again. <laughs> it's just, so she tried to be funny. Hmm, no, that was a very bad move. If I'm gonna say I'm gonna have to be, try to be funny, then I have to be funny then. It never works, does it? So I'll not try to be funny, and I'll be very serious and tell you that, mm, usually I don't like gray, but yeah. Mm, Gray is a kind of serious color, but then it's so good with other colors, isn't it? Especially brown, like warm orangey brown like this. So like in painting and stuff like that, I would never paint my house gray or anything, but in it's a really good support color. It's an excellent, uh, how do you say, back, back, uh, back singer. <laughs> okay. We're almost at the end here of the dreaded but crazy easy thumb hole, thumb hole uh, round. Okay, and so the last stitch goes here into the join and so just single crochets into the join. We're gonna work around our color B, no, color A. The last single crochet here, like so. And we're gonna join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round with a slip stitch and color A, whoop and chain one. And as you can see, now we have formed what will be the thumb of our mitten. Ta-da! Isn't it easy? Oh my God, it's so easy. And then you just, you just, we just work in the round here later on, we finish with that. But now we just can you continue up here. And I'm actually quite happy always when I'm at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm halfway done because, and even more because these uh, rounds obviously have quite a lot more stitches and now we only have 44 stitches for row for rounds so uh yeah so easy very neat that was round 19 all done okay on to round 20 do, 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 do. we're working with our main color and so now we're just going to work normal repeats but it's just I'm just gonna show you how you work here around the thumb hole, yeah? Uh, da, 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 chain one, one single crochets and three double crochets, okay? So we 
just do one single crochet here and then we go do one double crochet here before the thumb hole and then the next double crochet will be after the thumb hole and just look at where you worked your single crochets here so this stitch you obviously have to work into these are skip stitches so we're not going to be working into those yet so the next the dc after the thumb hole number two here in the repeat goes into this one here like so and that's two dcs and the third okay so it looks like this when looking at it from the thumb hole. The first DC of the three goes before the thumb hole and the two after. And then you just continue the same way with this repeat for the whole of the round. One double, no, one single crochet and three double crochets. Okay. All around the same. One single, three doubles. Okay, I've done that all around and then the last repeat is exactly the same. You do one single and then three doubles. First double lands here in the third of these three DCs. Then the second lands on the join, so let's go for the lower one. And the third here. Okay, and then you join into the back loop of the first single crochet off the round with color B whoop, whoop, and chain one. So that's round 20 all done. Okay, round 21 is super easy as all the other rounds. It's just three single crochets. One, two, three. Whoop. Split the yarn. Okay, and one double. Three singles, and one double down. Okay, you continue and do that all around. Okay, all around like this and finish with one last repeat. Three single crochets. Yeah, I forgot to say now we have how many repeats? We have 11 repeats per round because we skip, after we skip for the thumb hole. One, two, three, and the last stitch of the round is a double crochet, and we go down here, and do the double, and then we're going to join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round with color A and a slip stitch, and make it tight and nice, like so, and chain one. Okay. And let's just continue and go straight on to 22. <laughs> uh, and for 22, we're going to do the chain one, which we already did. And now we're going to do one double and three singles. This is the repeat for round 22. One double, three singles. And you do that all around and I'll catch up with you at the join. Okay, so I've gone all around. And here is the last repeat then, just the same as the other ones for round 22. And we do one double. And then three single crochets. One and two and third one lands in the join. We go around the double, okay, around the upcoming color, sorrow, sorry, wow. Um, uh, and then we join with color B into the back loop of the first DC of the round, like so, and chain one. That's round 22, all done. Okay, on to round 23, and that's an easy one. We're just going to do one double crochet. And what, what? Do, 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 do. It's like I split the yarn here. Um, we're working with our color B, the pattern color. And we're gonna do one double crochet, one single, just for the whole of this round. One double, and one single. 
like that all the way around okay I went all around and now we just have four stitches left and we continue and we do one double and one single and one double and this one lands on the join so remember to go low and one single and this one also lands on the join and remember to go into both loops work around our upcoming color A and do the last single crochet there and now we're going to join into the first uh, double crochet of the round into the back loop and actually now I'm going to introduce this gorgeous blue that I've been dying to use and I'm going to have a little fun with these. So on this one here I did the extra color on this round but now on this one I'm going to do it here just to have them a bit um, funky. And I think this blue will actually go really well with the gray and it will sort of enhance the blue tone in this favorite gray of mine. I mean, this is like my favorite gray in all yarn. Like, <laughs> Okay, very good Tina to not have done this beforehand. So much fun to look at me unravel a new skein, isn't it? <laughs> Professionalism, that is my middle name. <laughs> okay, I'm getting giddy. That always happens towards the end. Um, so join into the back loop of the, the first double crochet and I'm introducing a new color A here, just with a slip stitch as before and chain one. Uh, if you're just doing it, if you continue with the same color, then you don't have to change the color, obviously. Okay, so that was round 23. On to uh, round 24. Do, 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 do. And we're working, I'm working here now with my new color A, but it's just color A. Uh, so now we do what? I would say one double crochet, three single crochets. One double and three singles. And so since I'm just doing this one bit of change of color here, I'm not going to cut my old yarn. I'm just going to try and carry it on up. And I mean, again, this is in the inside of my of the mittens. Nobody's going to see it. And if you work around the tail as much as you can, then it won't be like uncomfortable that you wouldn't like get tangled in or anything. Uh, back on track, one double crochet, three single. OK, that's the repeat for round 24. One double and three singles. OK, and you go on like that for the whole round. And I'll meet you back at the join. Okay, I've gone the whole round here and it's just the last repeat. So I'm gonna do one double crochet here and three singles. One and two. And now the third lands in the join. And now I'm gonna work over both my tails, both the A gray uh, that I'm carrying up and the the uh, color B okay so just put both the tails up here and work around them like this okay and then we're going to join into the first double crochet of the round with a slip stitch and color B like so and chain one and that's row round 24 all done with a new color A. Okay, round 25, we're back with color B. And now we're gonna do one single crochet, one double. This is the repeat now, the one single was just one extra in the beginning of the round and the repeat is one double, three singles. One double, and three singles. Oh yeah, so talking about me being giddy. So <laughs> I just took a little break and came back because I was securing the, as you know, it is, well, actually now when I'm filming this. So, okay, the repeat is one double, three singles. Now I'm just gonna talk <laughs> and crochet. <laughs> Go on and doing one double, three singles. So uh, I'm filming this now today on a Sunday. 
And at midnight, it is my birthday and I will post it after midnight. So basically it's, a, you know, obviously you're just going to run, watch, run, run right away to watch my new tutorial. So it's my birthday when you watch this. <laughs> and uh, so I have been working on this all day and I thought, oh my God, uh, you know, we deserve um, a treat after we finish working tonight, me and my husband, because he then has to edit it. And then... I was like, okay, yeah, so go to the go to the, the shop and get some champagne. And I forgot, or well, didn't forget or whatever. But the 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 fun fact that I was gonna tell you is that uh, Iceland in Iceland the, the all the liquor stores are state owned. So they just they're just closed on Sunday. And I should know this being turning like 41 now, but forgot and so yeah all the liquor shops are state owned and obviously you know one is not supposed to be drinking on a Sunday who does that it's just scum <laughs> right <laughs> so they're just closed because that is uh, you know I don't know God's day or something you know not just proper folk will not be needing to buy any alcohol on Sunday or should not have to or want to do that so it's just closed but then the beautiful thing about Iceland is it's sm so small so I just posted on my Facebook saying like hey there anybody out there I know who has an extra Prosecco uh, lying around or champagne uh, downtown and within 15 minutes it was fixed and that is also why I was giddy when I came back, uh, because I have now secured the Prosecco that you have already seen me open in the intro. <laughs> you always have to have a prize at the end, right? I mean, that's the way to go. It's grand to have a prize. Uh, I'm just talking away and I forgot to work over my tail at the beginning of the last round. So I'm going to do that now here. It's going to unravel a bit. Uh, I really love when you just can work over all your tails and don't have to weave uh, whoopa, weave them in at the end when you finish. Oops, that was a bit too giddy. I'm not, I'm not drinking the champagne already, I promise. Just the thought of it makes me happy. <laughs> uh, okay, working over the tail from the new color A. And what have we here now? We have uh, double crochet and three singles. And then we have the last repeat and then we do one double. And we finish it with just three singles here because remember we started with one single. So we do one and two and the second one lands on the join. And we are going to, I tightened it before going in. That's not what we want, but you know. Okay, and now we're gonna work around both tails, remember, because I'm carrying up the color A, uh, the other one, the gray one. So I'm gonna work around both of them, one single crochet here, and then we join with the current color A, and a slip stitch into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round. Whoop, whoop, like so, and chain one. Okay, so that was round. 25 all done with the you know uh, <laughs> happy, happy thoughts of of uh, very uh, nearly being done and having some Prosecco <laughs> and throwing all with camber and everything <laughs> my God. again it's good that I started this route it was this one that said that like, my middle name is professional yeah that's that's uh, so right <laughs> round 25 done Okay, and on we go with round 26. It's color A again, and now the repeat is one single and three doubles. One, two, and three. So that's the repeat for round 26. And this one actually, if you want, you can make a fingerless version. This is quite cool as well. So if you're going to do that, then you just stop after this round and just add one, I think it's like one single crochet round, just to sort of finish it off. And I'll show you at the end of the round how this looks, but it's just one single, three doubles all the way around for 26. Okay, I've done this all around and we have one more repeat. That's one single crochet 
and three doubles. The first one just lands in a normal stitch. The second one lands in the join for round from round 24. So always choose the, lo the lower one, remember, go deep. <laughs> and the third one, and then we're going to join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round using color B. And in this round, we cannot work around our tails because we did not, and we, we finished it with a double crochet, not a single. Okay, join with a slip stitch and chain one. And now I'm gonna show you how this looks. So if you want to do the fingerless version for, uh, well, actually for size large, then you could do one more, but for small, medium and uh, extra, extra small to medium, you do it up to here. I'm actually reading the pattern right now and seeing that for large, I say go one more, but you can, you, you can just decide. I either stop here I think I would personally stop here, but that's because I like large because it's kind of wide, but it's not so long. So then you just add one round of single crochets here and then you're done. But they really look quite cool as finger fingerless as well. And then you can just add a bit. I'll show you when we do the thumb, then you just make it shorter and don't uh, close it up, obviously. Or you can actually just leave it like this. We'll just make one maybe round there or something, but they're quite cool like this, right? Oh, it goes beautifully with my layer polish. Oh, this was all planned, you guys. I mean, obviously. <laughs> uh, round 26, all done. Fingerless version. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so on we go to round 27. And this is the last round now that I show you before we then, and it's just a couple of repeats that I'll go over with you, which which rounds to repeat and then uh, we go, I'm going to show you when we get to the decrease at the top of the, the mittens, but okay, round 27. So round 27 is, yeah, it's just all single crochets, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just one single crochet into each and every loop, always into the back loop. Do, 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 do. So that's easy enough. And as before, if you're changing color B, then this is where you do it. When you do that whole single crochet round, that's where you change your color B if you want to have uh, various colors in your zigzags. Okay, so we're getting, I mean, don't you think this is just so easy and fun? It's so quick. I've just been doing this here for the afternoon and it's going so quickly. Usually I'll make one, I can make a mitten in, in a night, but you know, that's a bit of a tight, like I, I, I'd i say I make a pair and maybe I can do it in a couple of days, but not in one day. I will do it in two to three days, the pair. Uh, and like comfortably three nights, you know, you can do that. And another tip, when I do the, 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 the ribbing, I forgot to say that in the beginning, I always start by doing both the ribbings. It's so, it's just so, uh, how do you call it? It's encouraging to have started the second piece as well, because you know about the second piece syndrome, right? Yeah, it's a horrible syndrome. So then you make more just one and don't get, do the other one or the other one turns like, to be like way smaller or way bigger or something. It's just awful. Uh, but that's not gonna happen to you. Oh no, because you're just gonna do the ribbing, the first ribbing and then in the first round and then you have to cut the yarn, remember? And then you're just gonna do the second one right away and then you have that ready. So it's really encouraging to start the second one, yeah? Yes, 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 life hacks all around. Come to me, <laughs> it's all figured out. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay, we're getting to the end of the round. Uh, and it's just all single crochets here and the last one goes into the join remember to go into both both the slip stitch here and the one below and we're going to work around both our colors here because i'm carrying the extra color a up Oppa, like so that's the last single crochet and then you join into the back loop of the first single crochet of the round with the current color a like so and chain one Okay, so from now on and up to the the uh, the decrease at the top, we're just doing repeats. So I'm just going to going to write this down for you. So for large, then rounds twenty eight to thirty five are the same as rounds twenty to twenty seven. Yeah, I've shown you all this. 
So you just go back now if you want and then do rounds now 20 to 27. And then for rounds 36 to 41, you repeat again rounds 20, but now to 25, okay? So when finishing this round 27, you go back to 20, to 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then you go back to 20 and to 21, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you stop and then we're going to do the decrease to close off the mittens um, and I'll get back to show you that but for now this is the repeat that you need to do for rounds 28 to 41 okay I hope this is all clear and I'm going to do the same and I will just go abracadabra <laughs> so now I've done up to round 41 and I'm gonna show you how, how we continue after the repeats. And now we're gonna do the decrease. So the decrease I kept really simple. I love a simple decrease and I want it to be a bit fast and just um, easy to remember. I think that's important because once you start making this, hopefully you the same thing will happen to you as me, is that you cannot stop. <laughs> and it's always good when you can just remember a pattern. Uh, so the first round of the decrease is round 42 and actually uh, now we can cut yarn B because we are finished with that and we finish it all off with uh, the main color A and as you can see I'd finished my extra fun blue here and just change colors as I had shown you before where, where to change okay so this will be a fun set <laughs> okay on to round 42 then it's very easy how we start the decrease we're just going to skip all the uh, double crochets here okay so we skip the double crochet and we work three double crochets here down so normally in this round we will be working a single crochet into a double crochet but we're not going to do that skip that one and just work three double crochets drop down one and two and three and then again we skip one and work three double crochets. Very easy. And we continue like this the whole way round. Skip the DC from last round and work three double crochets. And this way we are decreasing but we are uh, sort of um, being true to the pattern. So the pattern won't uh, change you will still see it the same okay I'm gonna continue do the whole round and then I'll show you the joint okay I've got the whole round here we just need the last repeat and it's just as before we skip one stitch the double crochet and do three double crochets the first one lands here the second one lands on the joint so you go down one stitch remember and the third and then we're going to skip the chain and join into both loops now we join into the both loops of the first dc of the round with a slip stitch with the same color okay and that's round 42 then all done okay and since now we've done the decrease in 42 now we're supposed to have 33 stitches okay and we go on to round 43 and now we're just going to work one double crochet into each round into each stitch and we start by doing two chains rather keep them a bit tight and then we do the first uh, double crochet into the same stitch here as we joined into into the first DC from last round and just work one double crochet into both loops of each stitch of this round and try and do this rather tightly because we're kind of, there's no decrease in this round, but we're kind of uh, getting the decrease from last round, sort of tightening it up. Uh, it's coming together, the decrease, you know what I mean? So this is just one double crochet into each round, into each, each stitch. Okay, 
I've gone the whole way around, one double crochet into each stitch. And then we just work the last double crochet here. And then skip the chains and join into both loops of the first double crochet of the round with a slip stitch like so. And straight on to round 44. Um, mm -mm -mm. Now we do a steep decrease. We're going to do two chains and now we're going to do uh, two DCs together for the whole of the round. Okay, so you go into again the first one here to the same one as you joined and you do one uh, double crochet here and leave the last stitch, the last step and then yarn over and go into the next one and pull up and go through two and now you have two double crochets up on your hook and we're going to take them together like this. This is two DCs together. Okay, let's do it again. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull your yarn up, yarn over and pull through two and leave it like this and then yarn over again and go into the next stitch, and pull the yarn up, yarn over and go through two and now you have sort of like two double crochets up on your hook and you're going to yarn over and go through all three loops. Okay, so we do this for the whole of this round. It's just two DCs worked together as a repeat. So this is a very steep decrease we're doing here now, but I really rather like it when they have sort of like this, um, do you say this in English, like a sort of boludos, like they're a bit like bubbly here at the top. Don't like it when they get like pointy. Okay. And we just keep going like this the whole way, okay? Two DCs together all the way. Okay, so I've done this the whole round really. And also take care to do this round a bit tightly. Just all the decrease rounds, you should try and do them a bit tightly. Okay, so now we only have three stitches left here. So we're just gonna do another couple of double crochets to work together. And then we do one double crochet here in the last stitch and then we skip the two chains and join into the both loops of the first double crochet of the round like so and that's round 44 all done okay on to round 45 and from now on we're going to be working in a spiral so i'm going to put a little stitch marker here in the chain two here at the join just to know where my my join is at, okay, just a bit of yarn there. And for round 45, we're going to work just one single crochet. We do one chain and then one single crochet into both loops of each stitch, okay? And you want to work this tightly as well. So just one single crochet into each stitch. You should have in this round, how many round? Uh, like 15 stitches, but this is not a very important, like, 15, 16, 14. I mean, at this point, we're just going to close it up. So it's not like exact science or anything. Just one single crochet into each stitch and do this tightly to take together the decrease from last round even more. Okay, now we're coming up to our stitch markers. We know now here that the next one is the last stitch of this round. And then for round 45, 46, we are going to do more decrease. And now we're going to skip one stitch and work one single crochet, okay? And there's no chain and no joining here. We're just gonna finish them off now in a spiral, okay? So there's no join, really. So we skip one stitch and then into both loops here, we do one single crochet. And it's supposed to be tight like this. <laughs> one, and skip one and work one single crochet. Skip one, one single crochet. Skip one, one single, skip one, one single, skip one, one single, skip one, and one single, skip one, 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 one single, sk
skip and one and skip and one and now we are we are at the stitch mark here so we know we have finished this round and as you can see it's almost closed up and now for the last and final round round 47 final <laughs> we are going to skip one stitch and work one slip stitch. Okay, so we're just finishing off, like closing off this tiny little hole we have here left. Okay, we skip one and now we do slip stitches instead of single crochets. So straight through like this, okay? Skip one, one slip, and basically you just do this until there are no stitches left, okay? Skip one until one, slip stitch and the last one that I do I usually do it from this side not from this side because it's getting a bit difficult you see to go from this side so I just go straight over here and this is the last one I'm gonna do here skip one and slip stitch oops ah, got tangled there it's a bit fiddly here at the end one slip stitch here and voila and then you just break the yarn and pull it through your loop Da, 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 da. Mm, isn't it nice? So that's the body of our mitten all done. Okay, so we are very close to the finish line. You see how lovely it looks? Yay! <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Make a cute pair. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the body. And now we're just gonna do the thumb, which is, can you guess it? Super easy, easy peasy. <laughs> On to the last and final bit of our Hakla mitten is the thumb. And so we left this thumb hole here where we skipped these 16 stitches for the large. And now we're just gonna work into a circle in these. And it's quite easy. It's a bit fiddly because it's so small, the circle, but I mean, it's relatively easy. So what you want to do is to find the first skipped stitch, which is here. Remember, you see this one here is worked into. So you just insert your hook under both loops of the first stitch that you skipped for the thumb. And we're gonna use the same color A as we were using here. As you can see, sometimes when I'm using more than one color, then I just take care to use the same color as is in the uh, color A at that part. Okay, so, aha, uh -huh. and leave a bit of a tail here because we're gonna use that to close up. There will be a tiny gap here at the, like at this, this part here. And then, so leave a bit of a tail here, which we will use to sew that together uh, once we finish the thumb. Okay, so you're just going to pull your yarn through and work one chain into both stitches here of the first stitch that we skipped for the thumb. And now we're going to work the thumb all in a spiral with half double crochets, okay? So you yarn over, go into both loops of the next stitch and pull your yarn up and then you have three loops up on your hook and go through all three of them, like so. And we're going to work into each loop, each stitch of the ones that we skipped for the thumb, like this, that was 16 stitches. And then we're going to add a bit at the sort of the join part where it joins the, the body of the mitten. Okay, just one double, no, one half double crochet into each stitch. Okay. See, here we have three left before we get to the join, two and three. And now at the join, like where the join is between the thumb and the body of the mitten, let me just do one thing before we continue. And I'm gonna tuck this long tail that we left to the inside because it's just uncomfortable to have it out here in our way, uh -huh, like so. And now we get to this bit here. And as you can see, okay, I'm gonna try and do this extra close so you can see. Um, we have now worked into the last skipped stitch here and we're gonna add three stitches at the join here. And where I do this is that I add it into the stitch that is 
worked here. Remember when we worked over a thumb, we did one double crochet here and then two double crochets on the other side. We're going to work into the first stitch here that we worked after the thumb. And then we're going to work into the base here of this double crochet here. And then we're going to work into also the stitch here, the last stitch that we uh, worked into before skipping the thumb. Okay. So the, the one, the last stitch before jumping over the thumb hole, the the first it's after jumping over it and then sort of the root of this one here in between okay in the end i mean you can do this as you please you just have to add three stitches there i'm just gonna i'm just showing you how i do it okay so now we add the three stitches so i'm gonna uh, yarn over and do it here one here in the stitch that we worked into after the the jumping <laughs> okay one half double crochet there yarn over and then I'm going to do one half double crochet here into it's sort of in the, the the row above you see this one single double crochet here this lone double crochet so we're gonna do one double half double crochet there and then we add the third stitch here into the same stitch as the last stitch before the thumb jump okay da, 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 like so and then we're going to work the last half double crochet of this round into the same stitch as we joined into. Okay, I want to talk at that end here now. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last half double crochet goes into the same stitch as we started this thumb here where we joined with a chain. Okay, and now we're just going to work into a spiral. So we're not going to not going to chain or join or anything. So we're just working in a spiral, and you don't really even have to put a a stitch mark or anything to mark the join because you just know that it's here just at this part of the of the thumb and so for large i will do in the pattern i say that you're supposed to do nine rounds but i only made eight for mine actually because um it just fits better but i mean you can just uh, fit it you know just try it on when you're doing it and see if it fits but like if i were making it for my husband or a man maybe i would do nine but this is something that is very easy to control but i'm just going to do eight now so we've done one and now we just continue and work into both loops of each and every half double crochet just straight on you see there's no joining there's no nothing and i'm just there we go, half double crochets, just in a spiral like this. Eight to nine rounds, okay? You can make it shorter, you can make it longer, as you please. The decrease is very abrupt and quick. So I'll show you, I'll try it on once I have my eight to show you how it fit, then fits my thumb. But before I do that, I'm going to show you, like if you're going, if you're doing the fingerless version, then it's cool to do just two rounds of the thumb and then stop. Even if you don't even have to do thumb, the thumb if you're doing the fingerless. But I kind of like it better when it's like this. So and now when I'm going over here, it's just into the stitches here that we added, just like we, like the other ones. No mystery here. Okay, I'm going to see if you can see this properly. Yeah. And as you can see, I mean, there are tiny little holes here and we will fix that with the tail at the end. And just keep going in a spiral. So no joining or nothing, just continuing to work the thumb. And it's really super easy and not complicated at all, but it's a bit fiddly to do, do it in this small circle. But I'm just going to show you now when I try it on, like this would be cool for the fingerless version to just have like a bit there, maybe two rounds or something. Okay, I'm gonna continue. I've done two rounds. Just you continue until you've done eight rounds or nine here. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you how it fits and how you close it off. Okay, so I've worked my eight rounds here of the thumb and I'm just gonna just show you when I try it on. You can, like my thumb is exactly here. So it's covering my thumb. And so basically just once it covers your thumb, then you can do your decrease because it's rather quick, the decrease, okay? So I'm gonna show you that now. And that's the absolute last of the mitten. And you see, you just go until you get to this bit here, you know that then you finished your 
eight or nine rounds is fine. It just depends on what you want, if you want it a bit longer or shorter. And now what we're going to do in this, it's just one round really, but it's a bit more than one round. But uh, we're just going to work, uh, skip one, uh, one half double crochet until there are just four stitches left. Okay, so I skip one and I do one half double crochet in the next one. Skip one, one HDC, skip one, one HDC. Do do do, skip one, one halfy, skip one, one halfy, skip one, one half, skip one, skip one, and go into the next one, skip one, and go into the next one. Up, up. This is very easy to crease. Okay, skip one and do one half double crochet in the next one. And now we're sort of at the end of the round, but I'm gonna do one more, I think. How many stitches do we have left now? Do, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do one more half double crochet here. Skip one and one half double crochet. And then to totally finish it off here, when we only have four stitches left, then we're just gonna do a skip one and do one slip stitch. Okay, skip one, one slip stitch. And, well, we can't even skip one there. Just one skip st slip stitch here from the other side, like I did, like we finished the mitten. Like so, and we break the yarn, and we pull it through, and voila! Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yay! So the thumb of these are a bit um, wide because this is a large. The only difference really on the on the medium is that it's a bit snugger fit both here and the thumb is a bit smaller. But I kind of like it like this. It looks like a loofer, we say in Icelandic, the ones that you use in snow. So there you go. And you've done it. I'm sure that it looks great for you guys as well. So now the only thing that is left is just to uh, take your ends and get them, sort of uh, fish them into, so we can get them on the inside. Do gonna do that here so it closes up. Fish those onto the inside, and then we're gonna turn it inside out and weave in the tails, which are not very many actually, because we've been working over our tails. Dee, 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 dee. Where did it go? Here it is. And here. Okay. So, where are my needles? So, let's see. This one here has already been worked over, so I'm just gonna tuck at that and cut. This one here as well has been worked over. So tuck and cut there too. Uh, 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 uh. This one here has also been worked over. This was just because I started with that small skein. So then we only have the one here at the join, which we want to have to make it a bit neater. The ones at the top here and the last of the color B here. So I'm gonna weave in those ends, always tuck at it nicely and then just do two movements. One and two. And so when you do it at the top uh, of both the body of the mitten and the, what's it called, um, thumb, just in case that you have a bit of hole here or something, I mean, don't think that I do, but you know, you can use this end obviously to just close it extra 
carefully here at the top. But it doesn't seem like mine is just perfect, you guys. There's no holes. <laughs> but this is what I would do here. I would, you know, use this tail to just give it a little extra strength here at the top. If something is a bit loose or something. And the same here, I think this is a bit maybe. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, yeah, just can do a bit of fixing here, of making it extra nice and snug and tug. Okay. Sodden. And then there is the last tail. I'm talking with the needle in my mouth. <laughs> and that's this one here. And that's really the most important one. So what I use this one for is to kind of sew a bit together the gap that you will have here between where we jumped the join where we jumped here. So just you see these are the three stitches here that we added. So basically just go a bit over there. You see and just make it extra nice just to fill in those little holes there. Mm -hmm. And this is no like there's no like right or wrong way to do this. Just you know do your best. Common sense is what I would say. Okay. No hold there now. And we cut. And that's our Hakla mitten all ready and done. See how easy and fun it was. I hope you will make loads of these. And obviously the pattern is available on Ravelry and comes in five sizes. This was the large. This is like the basic grown up version. It comes from extra small for, for kitties to extra large for those who will need that. And there we go. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> It's not blocked like the other one, obviously, but they're quite cute together, aren't they? Yay! <laughs> All done! Whoop whoop! <laughs> Could put this one on top because it's nicer, isn't it? <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks, you guys. Ciao!